Let me take you back to 1972. Vietnam. Watergate. That was also the year a wacky off-the-wall show premiered called MASH. Along with Alan Alda's Hawkeye, I played a guy named Trapper John. Hi, I'm Wayne Rogers. In most places, you can probably still find me on MASH, which to this day remains one of the most beloved comedies ever put on the air. Not bad when you remember that MASH was about war, the Korean War. And in its own unique way, it dealt with the absurdities of war. While at the same time, we were watching a very real war on TV. The Vietnam War was the first televised war. Every night, we could turn on the evening news and see the horrors of battle right in our own living rooms. Maybe that's why MASH struck such a nerve. It provided an escape. But some things were just too real to escape. Back in 1972, the single click of a camera brought us one of the most heartbreaking and horrifying images of war the world has ever seen. Vietnam. For the first time, the world witnessed the atrocity of war via television, and terrifying photographs relayed almost instantly. On June 8, 1972, the South Vietnamese Air Force, looking for enemy communists, dropped napalm bombs on their own people in a small village near Saigon. No other image tells the horrifying story of war more poignantly than this one taken of nine-year-old Kim Phu running down the road. Her little body was covered with jellied gasoline that stuck to her skin and burned her to the bone. I think the war happened in my village uh, during three days. The first day, and the second day, we, uh, we have to move to the pagoda. It's nearby my house, because the people think uh, that is the holy place, and they, they won't drop the bomb in there, so the people can hide there. The third day, they drop the neighbor bomb. I saw the plane, so uh, the people say, uh, we have to run out another play. Uh, if we don't, uh, we will die there. And suddenly, a lot of fire around me. The fire burned everything. My, my clothes is burning. And it's just so scared, so it's terrible, you know. But I keep running, so right at that moment, they took the picture. I saw my, my brother younger and uh, older brother, they run with me. And so we keep running and crying and screaming. And I feel so hot. After that, I saw my grandma uh, carried my cousin. I, I hear her voice uh, screaming. She say, oh my goodness, why you run like that? He died after two hours. Some soldier, I don't know, he, he gave to me water, and I don't remember at all after that. So sad. And my family, um, they lost everything after the war. 20-year-old Nick Oot took the unforgettable photo. He became an Associated Press combat photographer at the age of 16, when he replaced his older brother who was killed while covering the war. Kim's story was nearly untold. Initially, an AP staffer was reluctant to release the photo because of the nudity. Fortunately, another insisted that it be sent right away. Nick Oot received the Pulitzer Prize for his photo, and the image became a worldwide symbol of the anguish of war. I many years covered Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia. I never see a picture of all children screaming like that. When I saw that picture, I can't believe the truth happened like that. Kim suffered third-degree burns on 75% of her body. She stayed in the hospital for 14 months and endured numerous painful surgeries. 
Although the victorious communists used Kim as a symbol of war in the anti-America propaganda campaign, they allowed her to move to Cuba to study. It was there that she fell in love with another Vietnamese student, Duan Bui Hui. She always uh, thought at the moment that uh, she never married because of um, her burn. Kim and Duan married in Havana and honeymooned in Moscow. On the return flight, Kim decided to make a break for freedom. She saw her chance when the plane stopped to refuel in Newfoundland. She got off the plane with nothing but her purse. Not even her new husband knew her plans to defect. I told him, I have to stay. I can't come back to Cuba. Yeah, I, uh, I can't live there anymore. Despite her painful past, Kim's iron will and spirit have taken both her and Duan to Canada, where Kim has finally found freedom. Now, my husband uh, just got a job, and uh, I have uh, a little baby. His name is Thomas. <laughs> and uh, I stay at home with him to take care of him. It's a good job. <laughs> Kim Phuc, whose name in Vietnamese means golden happiness, has found some peace as well. But constant physical pain and frightening memories still haunt her dreams. It's terrible. Every time I have nightmare, oh, after that when I wake up, I feel so cold and it's, it's terrible time. Every time I see it, I feel so sad. But for myself and my family and another people. Nick Oot is still covering the events of the world as an AP photographer based in Los Angeles. Although he thinks about Kim, who now calls him Uncle Oot, he has never seen her life in Canada or her new baby. So we sent him to Toronto to surprise Kim. He brought the same camera he used in 1972 to photograph her once again. Yeah. Hello, Kim. Oh, my goodness. Where you are? Happy to see you. I feel wonderful when I see him. I can't believe that. <laughs> he comes to see me. He can't believe I had that child like that. I want my son to know about my Uncle Oak. <laughs> Nick came with a special gift. Unbeknownst to anyone, he had visited Kim's parents in Vietnam earlier this year and brought back a video of her mother and father. For me, uh, the one thing that me cry is my mom. I want to be with her, or she with me. I'm thinking of them, how can they survive in Vietnam? It's a very hard part of my life right now. Her remarkable strength and courage, Kim Phuc has not only endured, but prevailed, and has gracefully built a new future for herself, one that is filled with compassion and humanity. I have a good life right now, you know, even through a lot of pain, but it's behind me. Uh. <laughs>